Hi ninjas and welcome to another visual guide of Sekiro. After the tutorial stage in the Ashina Reservoir is completed and you wake up at the dilapidated temple with the shinobi prosthetic, you can now begin acquiring prosthetic tools that let you even the odds against powerful enemies and secure victories by utilizing the enemy's weaknesses. Some of these tools can be found for free, some need to be bought from merchants, while others need to be fought for to be acquired. Bring these tools to the sculpture to be fitted into the shinobi prosthetic, and then you can freely equip it in the menu. Also, after you defeat Gyobu, you get the mechanical barrel, which when brought to the sculpture, you can begin to make upgraded versions of the tools you've found. These upgraded tools cost money and crafting materials, such as different gunpowders, scrap metals, waxes, and then some unique special items that can be only found once and are only used to gain this specific tool. Each usage of a tool costs spirit emblems that serve as your ammunition. These can be acquired by either killing enemies, found from certain locations once, or bought from the sculpture's idol with money. First up is the loaded shuriken. You find this item at one of the gatehouses in the Ashina outskirts right before the fight with General Naomori Kawarada. In the second floor is a body of a nightjar ninja that holds the shuriken wheel your standard throwing ninja stars, that when used makes wolf throw one in a straight line to a very long distance. The loaded shuriken can be used to kill weaker unaware enemies, interrupt casts, and is especially strong against jumping enemies. As an enemy is in the air, a shuriken can be thrown at them, which then interrupts them airborne and makes them fall to the ground, vulnerable for a free direct hit. The first upgrade, spinning shuriken, adds a spinning momentum to the shuriken, so as you hold the R2 button and then throw, Upon connecting to the enemy, it spins in place, dealing multiple small hits. The second upgrade, Gouging Top, adds a penetrating effect that damages the enemy even if they block it. After buying the Phantom Lady Butterfly's Kunai from Anayama for 3000 sen in the Ashina outskirts, you can make the Shuriken into a Kunai that flies the same but now spawns Phantom Butterflies that home towards the targeted enemy, and upon contact deal chip damage through their defenses. Send Throw lets you use your money as ammunition instead of shurikens that spread in a wide cone-shaped area. This tool costs both money and spirit emblems but deal a lot more damage. And finally the Lazulite Shuriken, which throws a piercing shuriken that damages the enemy even if they block it, passes through the enemy and has increased damage compared to the gouging top. All of the loaded shuriken tools can be combined with the chasing slice skill from the prosthetic skill tree, where you throw a shuriken and afterwards press the attack button, making wolf dash a long distance forward or towards the targeted enemy. Next we have the shinobi firecracker. The base item, Robert's Firecrackers, can be bought from two different merchants and once it has been bought from one of them, the other does not have it. First one is the Crow Merchant above the cliff just next to Nogami Inosuke's house. The other is the Battlefield Merchant behind Gyobu's arena. This item costs 500 sen and if you are short of money to buy them, there are 5 light coin purses spread just before reaching the merchants. One behind the dilapidated temple, one at the bird's nest on top of the house after General Naomori Kawarada, and three under the house of the old lady. When you use this item, Wolf throws a set of loudly crackling firecrackers just in front of him in a half circle area. Those close to the firecrackers cover their face and flinch to the sparkles and sound, stunning them for 3 seconds. During this time they are vulnerable for a direct hit and might even break casts and super armor animation. Beasts and animals are especially vulnerable to this, Along with the immensely prolonged stun animation, it also raises many animal type enemies' posture bars. The first upgrade is the Spring Load Firecracker, which does the same as the base tool, but also if you hold the R2 button, it will sprinkle the firecrackers to all directions, not just at the front. The Long Spark has the same effect as the previous two versions, but also has the longer crackling time, so if enemies come in range during this time, they will be stunned. And finally, the Purple Fume Spark upgrade has a small delay before it explodes, so you can strategize the moment better. If the enemies are struck with the Purple Fume Spark, they will take extra damage from attacks for a short while. The Shinobi Firecrackers can also be combined with the Chasing Slice kill. Next we'll look at the Flame Vent. Its base item can be found when you travel to the Hirata Estate and on your way inside the first bandit encampment. Upon a roaring bonfire, you find the Flame Barrel. When used, Wolf shoots a short-range cone of fire forward that damages enemies in hits and if enough fire is used, will apply the burn status upon. If you throw oil at the enemies, they will get the burn status way more faster. If an enemy has glowing red eyes, such as the Chained Ogre, they will fear fire and will be stunned for 4 seconds before they resume fighting again. 
the spring load flame vent lets you do the same, but also if you hold the R2 button, it will let you do an explosion of fire in front of you that pushes Wolf backwards. For the next upgrade, Okinaga's flame vent, you will need the pine resin ember item, which you can find in the Mibu village in the hunter Inuhiko's house's roof that is located across the lake. Okinaga's flame vent has the previous version's abilities and also the ability to hold a constant stream of fire, which you can move and direct. This uses up spirit emblems constantly, so be wary of that. And the final upgrade is the Lazulite Sacred Flame, that has all the previous abilities and the blue flame that can also damage apparitions. If you use the skill Living Force with this ability to read your sword in flames, that also works with the previous versions, the blue flame sword works like divine confetti and lets you deal damage to apparitions as well. As mentioned, the flame vent can be combined with the living flame skill in the prosthetic skill tree. Next up is the loaded axe. The base item is found very soon after the flame barrel in the Hirata estate, when you progress to the upper living areas and then turn left to see two bandits discussing something in front of a small temple. Earlier, a dying samurai granted you the permission to take the contents of the temple, so after killing the bandits, you open the doors and find the shinobi axe of the monkey. When you use the axe, Wolf prepares to wind up the heavy axe and then smashes it forward in an overhead swing. This is mainly used to break shields that enemies might have, and as the shield breaks, the enemy is instantly left vulnerable to a death blow. The spring load axe lets you do the same smashing attacks, but also when you hold the R2 button, Wolf swings the axe in a whirlwind attack once before he uses the overhead smash attack. And while spinning, if you press the R2 button repeatedly, you can continue spinning as long as you have spirit emblems. The sparking axe has the same abilities as the previous ones, but now adds fiery explosions upon contact with the smash. That might add the burnt status on enemies, and like the flame vent, scares enemies with red eyes. The final upgrade, the Lazulite Axe now deals damage to enemies through their guards and it acts like a snapseed that dispels illusions and does damage to the illusion corrupted monk. The loaded axes can be combined with the Fang and Blade skill where after using the axe, pressing attack afterwards, Wolf jumps forward and does a continuation attack with both the sword and the axe. Next we'll take a look at the loaded sphere. This base item can be found in the Ashina castle where as you are at the Ashina castle idol, Turn left and jump to the branch on the other side of the moat. Now on the bridge are two soldiers discussing something, and eavesdropping them will reveal a bit about the upcoming prosthetic tool, but I'm here to tell you about it thoroughly anyway, so for now, kill the one with the spear to receive the gatehouse key. Now head to the Ashina reservoir and open up the door to the gatehouse, where inside you will find a chest that contains Gyobu's broken horn, which is the base item to the loaded spear. When you use the loaded spear, Wolf will take a small lunging step and thrust with the spear, dealing damage to the enemy. But as you press R2 again when the attack connects, you can pull the enemy closer to you and then hit them. But as the soldiers that had the key were discussing, sometimes enemies, such as the Taro troopers, might have armor on them that is placed on them very poorly. During these times, you can use the same pulling motion to strip these enemies from their armor to start dealing damage to them normally. And as a special case, the headless ape is also susceptible to the spear, as when he falls down after some of his combos have been successfully deflected, he slumps into the ground. During this time, you can use the spear on him to deal HP and posture damage with the pulling motion. The first upgrade to the loaded spear is the thrust type, which when you hold the R2 button, it will let you perform a rush attack on the enemy that does multiple hits on the enemy and rushes towards the enemy a lot longer distance. The second upgrade, the cleave type, is similar to the thrust type, but instead of the rush attack, when holding R2, you instead gain a massive cleave attack that cleaves through your surrounding enemies. The Spiral Spear's normal thrust does a corkscrew thrust at the enemy that has the same effect but also damages the enemy slightly if they block you. And finally, the Leaping Flame has the same abilities as the cleave type, except it adds a flame to all of the attacks that, as per usual, do chip damage and apply the burn status when it's used enough. The Loaded Spears can be combined with the Fang and Blade skill that activates if you press the attack button after you've done the pull maneuver, and also with the Chasing Slice skill that activates once you press the attack button after the first thrust attack. Next in the list is the Mist Straven. The base item is found in the Hirata Estate, when after you defeat Enshin and get to the Bamboo Thicket Idol, instead of going forward, grapple onto the ledge on the left, and then dive into the water. Now swim under the big bridge and grapple onto the branch that comes across soon after. At the end of this small patch of land is a secret door, which you can just break 
and within the cave, continuous wall jump up to the cliff, where you see a three-story pagoda. Upon the pagoda is a single lone shadow enemy, which you either defeat or just run past, but as you open the doors of the pagoda, you find the Mist Raven's feathers. When you use the Mist Raven tool, Wolf will make a ninja hand gesture, and an animation happens where black feathers flow around you. This animation doesn't do anything on itself, but if you are struck by any normal attack during this time, you vanish and teleport into the air and can surprise your enemy with an attack. Note that this does not include grab attacks and it will be caught even if you are using the Mist Raven. But if you instead press a direction along with the R2 while using the Mist Raven and you are struck, you instead teleport a short distance to the same direction you pressed within the ground level. And also, if you use the Mist Raven when the lightning attack is used, you teleport in the air and retain the lightning, but don't take chip damage that would normally occur when grabbing the lightning, and can reverse it normally. However, if you press a direction when the lightning attack hits you, you teleport, but as soon as the teleport animation has ended, you receive the effect of the shock status as your feet touch the ground. The first upgrade is the Age Feather Mist Raven, which works the same as the base tool, but in addition you can use it immediately after getting hit by an attack to use the same Mist Raven effect. The Great Feather Mist Raven adds an explosive fire to the spot where you got hit, which as usual stuns red-eyed enemies and builds up the enemy's burn status. As with the Loaded Axe and the Loaded Spear, Mist Raven can also be combined with the Fang and Blade skill. Next we'll look at the Sabi Maru. The base item can be found within the Ashina Castle, where you enter the walkways from the antechamber, grapple onto the beam under the bridge in the middle. Now look down to see a group of samurai beneath the direction of the antechamber. Lock onto one of them and aerial death blow them to soften the land. Behind the blue guard elite samurai is a door that leads to a smaller room and at the back end of the room is a treasure chest. Open it to find the Sabi Maru. This Kodachi blade is coated with the blue rust poison that is said to be highly effective against the women of the ancient Okami clan. When using the Sabi Maru, you make swift strikes that deal small amounts of damage but also build up the enemy's poison meter. You can make a combo of 6 swift strikes by repeatedly pressing R2 where the final attack is a slightly stronger one. Against most enemies when the poison kicks in, they simply receive the poison status. But some specific enemies such as Snake Eye Shirafuji, Odin of the Water and the Okami Warriors of the Fountainhead Palace receive the poison status, take a huge chunk of HP and posture damage and get staggered for a few seconds. The first upgrade is the improved Sabi Maru that lets you switch between your main weapon, Ksabi Maru, and make longer combos as you press R1 between the attack combo. The piercing Sabi Maru lets you do the same switch up attacks as the improved Sabi Maru and it also deals small amounts of damage to the enemy even if they are guarding the attacks. And finally, the Lazulite Sabi Maru has all the previous abilities and features of the other Sabi Marus and in addition leaves out a poison mist that lingers in the air for a few seconds where you swung the Sabi Maru. Up next is the Loaded Umbrella. The base item can be found from the NPC Black Hat Badger who you can find behind the Ashina Castle close to the Old Grave Idol. From the idol, look down to see a roof that has a hole in it. Drop down on the roof and then drop down into the building through the hole to find Black Hat in there. At this point, he will sell you the base item for 1,600 sen, but if you come here after defeating Great Shinobi Owl, he will be gone and has instead left the Iron Fortress to you for free. To use the Loaded Umbrella, you have two options. Either you press R2 quickly once to fold it out and immediately put it back, or you press and hold the R2 button to have it shield over you and give you cover and protection. Holding the shield out does not cost extra spirit emblems. By using it quickly, you make a deflection similar to pressing L1 as you would block or deflect attacks normally, and holding it out can block attacks incoming from all directions simultaneously. This method of blocking of course increases your posture as normally. The Loaded Umbrella is also very effective against huge flurry attacks such as Genichiro's Floating Passage or Ishin's One Mind. The Loaded Umbrella Magnet adds the ability to spin the umbrella while you hold it by pressing the block button or L1. This allows you to deflect attacks instead of blocking them while you are under the umbrella. The Phoenix's Lilac Umbrella does the same thing as the Magnet version, but while under the Lilac Umbrella, you are protected against supernatural attacks effects, which include the Headless's attacks, the Shichimin Warrior's attacks, and both Genichiro's and Inner Ishin's mortal draws. And finally, the Suzaku's Lotus Umbrella switches the Lilac Umbrella's supernatural protection to fire protection, where you don't take chip damage from fire attacks and don't build up the burn status. 
This shield is especially effective against the Demon of Hatred's fire wave attack, the jumping explosion slam attack, the fireballs, and many of Ishin Ashina's fire attacks. All of the loaded umbrellas can be combined with the projected force skill, where immediately after you come out under the shield and press attack, Wolf will use a strong attack with both his sword and the shield. But if you use it with the Phoenix's lilac shield while you have the Divine Confetti on, it will instantly deplete your Divine Confetti buff. However, you can deal damage to the Headless and the Shichiman warriors with the projected force while using the lilac shield, even if you don't have the Divine Confetti active. Next, we look at the Divine Abduction. The base item is found immediately after you defeat Long Arm Centipede Giraffe at the Gunfort. Behind him is an altar with the large fan base item. The Divine Abduction has two steps when using. First step is to charge it up, where you gather up a wind that circles around you. This charge stays around you for 3 seconds and then dissipates, wasting the charge and the spirit emblems. The second step is the release, where the actual attack happens. The vortex spreads from around you to all directions for a short distance, turning all normal enemies to face their backs at you, where you can now perform a free death blow from behind. However, if you use this attack on any enemy devoted to Buddha, mainly the Senpo monks, they will be spirited away, meaning that they are instantly killed, leaving only their loot on the ground. Note that only the charge up costs spirit emblems, not the actual release. The double divine abduction is as the name sounds, where you can charge up once, but can make two releases as long as the vortex stays on you. And finally, the golden vortex is the same as the double divine abduction, but you can use it upon enemies and they will drop Sen and items. You can combine the divine abduction with the living force skill, where your sword is imbued with the power of the divine abduction and will do the same effects as mentioned before. And finally, we have the Finger Whistle. The base item is acquired when you defeat the Guardian Ape at the Bodhisattva Valley. Alongside the battle memory, you gain the Slender Finger. The Finger Whistle works that you press R2 to blow the whistle. If you have no one targeted while whistling, all enemies nearby will hear the sound and will be drawn to it. But if you have a target locked on, only that target will hear it and be drawn to it. While it has this effect on humans, on beasts it will have much greater effect where they are driven wild and cannot discern friend from foe and will attack the nearby target. The first upgrade, the Mountain Echo, has the same abilities as the Finger Whistle but also lets you hold the whistle sound in place by pressing and holding R2. After the sound waves have come out, it'll activate in approximately 3 seconds. During this time, you can move to a different location and when the sound activates, the enemy will move towards the direction of the sound and you can get easy death blows. And finally, for the final upgrade, Malcontent, you will need to defeat the Shichiman warrior at the Guardian Ape's watering hole to acquire the item Kingfisher in order to create this upgrade. The Malcontent lets you use the Finger Whistle to stun apparition-type enemies such as the Headless, the Shichiman warriors, Odin of the Water and the Demon of Hatred. Like the Loaded Umbrella, you can use the Projected Force skill after using the Finger Whistle where you first whistle normally and then hit the sound with your sword which makes the sound wave travel straight forward and stop once it hits a solid barrier, such as a wall. Once this sound wave stops and the whistling activates, the enemy will go to that location instead. And with that, we will wrap up with the video. With this guide, you now know how to acquire and use all the prosthetic tools in the game and further succeed against your enemies. I hope this video was of help, leave a like if it was, subscribe for more, and if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, stay vigilant, and I'll see you next time. Fight, fight, fight if you wanna live.